Good afternoon. Our lecture for this afternoon will be diseases of the breast. At the end of this lecture, the student should be able to discuss the etiology, pathologic features of different forms of benign, non-neoplastic, and neoplastic breast disease. List of benign breast diseases that increase a patient's risk of developing breast cancer and classify these conditions by the degree of risk. Outline other risk factors predisposing to breast cancer and incidence prevalence of breast cancer. Classify breast cancer into histologic subtypes and describe the pathologic features of each. List the prognostic factors for breast cancer. So before we go into your acquired breast diseases, we have congenital abnormalities as your breast disease. We have accessory nipples, congenital nipple inversion, atelia or amastia, that is lack of nipple and lack of breast tissue, polymastia, breast hypertrophy, and tubular breasts. The usual presentation of a breast mass would be a palpable lump, an inflammatory mass, nipple discharge, or a non-palpable abnormality such as redness and pain. Methods of diagnosis would be a fine needle aspiration biopsy incisional or excisional biopsy, or image-guided biopsy. The classification of benign breast disease is usually classified as aberrations of normal development and involution, pathologic classification, clinical classification, and classification based on the risk for malignancy. Inflammation would be acute mastitis. So it is the most clinical important form of mastitis and usually results in breastfeeding due to cracks or fissures in the nipples and bacterial infection most often by staph or use. <clears throat> It is usually unilateral with acute inflammation in the breast leading to abscess formation. Treatment is surgical drainage, often under general anesthesia and antibiotics. Mammary duct ectasia occurs at the fifth and sixth decades of life. It affects mainly the large ducts with periductal chronic inflammation, destroying and dilating ducts with concomitant fibrosis. Underlying cause is unknown. It is a poorly defined periareolar mass which can be used, confused clinically and radiologically with carcinoma. It can also present as a thick, cheesy nipple discharge with or without the mass. Periductal fibrosis could cause skin retraction, mimicking carcinoma, spur the erage. Another inflammation would be fat necrosis. It's an uncommon lesion, which may be a history of trauma, prior surgical intervention, or radiation therapy. It's characterized by a central focus of necrotic fat cells with lipid-laden macrophages and neutrophils. It's a chronic inflammation with limbs and multinucleated giant cells. Its major clinical significance is it's also confused with carcinoma because of the fibrosis, a clinically palpable mass, and calcium ion cells seen on mammography. 
Non-proliferative changes or fibrocystic changes are the most common breast disorder. These alterations are present in most women and it's not associated for progression or cancer. It is questionable if it's due to hormonal imbalances. Features of fibrocystic changes would be cystic change, apocrine metaplasia, adenosis, and fibrosis. There is proliferative disease without atypia. This is your epithelial hyperplasia, which increases the number of layers of cells lining ducts and acini. This involves ducts and acini are filled with overlapping, proliferating cells. Another proliferative disease without atypia is sclerosing adenosis. This is characterized by the increase of numbers of acini plus stroma fibrosis within the locules. This can be associated with calcifications which may be detected on mammography. Then we have a typical hyperplasia. This is epithelial hyperplasia which is characterized by a typical architectural and or cytologic features. This can affect either your ducts, a typical ductal hyperplasia, or your lobules, or your, or your atypical lobular hyperplasia. And then we have your benign tumors. The most common benign tumor is your fibroadenoma. It is a circumscribed lesion composed of both proliferating, glandular, and stromal elements. So this is an example of a fibroadenoma. Patients usually present less than 30 years old, and your classic presentation is that of a firm, mobile lump. Giant forms may occur, especially in younger patients. This can be associated with proliferative changes in the adjacent breast tissue, and approximately 20% of lesions are complex fibroadenomas characterized by certain specific histologic features. Another benign tumor is your duct papilloma. This is a benign papillary epithelial tumor which occurs mainly in large ducts. Papillae are for fibrovascular stalks lined by layers of proliferating epithelial and myoepithelial cells. Most patients present with a serous or bloody nipple discharge. So each of the tumors mentioned prior would have a relative risk for invasive breast cancer for benign breast lesions. So no increased risk would be mastitis, fat necrosis, mammary duct ectasia, even if the latter two would have would be considered for malignancy, fibrocystic disease, and simple fibroadenoma. With a slightly increased risk, with relative risk increase 1.5 to 2 times, would be your moderate hyperplasia, sclerosing adenosis, complex fibroadenoma, and your ductal papilloma. Moderately increased risk with risk increased 4 to 5 times would be your atypical ductal and lobular hyperplasia. So carcinoma of the breast, it's one of the most common malignancy in women worldwide. And incidence rates are highest in North America, Australia, and Western Europe. Intermediate in South America, Caribbean in Eastern Europe, and lowest in China, Japan, and India. 
Incidence of breast cancer with any malignancy increases with age, and it's quite uncommon before age 25, since incidence it increases to the time of menopause and then slows down. Another risk factor would be family history. 10% of breast cancer is due to inherited genetic predisposition. So a woman whose mother or sister has had breast cancer is at increased relative risk 2 to 3 times compared to other women. At least two genes that predispose to breast cancer have been identified. This is your BRCA1 and BRCA2. So, mutations in these tumor suppressor genes also predispose affected women to ovarian cancer. Of course, as mentioned previously, certain types of benign breast diseases would be a risk factor for breast malignancy. History of cancer in the other breast or a history of ovarian or endometrial cancer may predispose to breast malignancy as well. Any state that would have increased levels of estrogen would increase risk for breast malignancy, such as early menarche, late menopause, nulliparity, late childbirth, of, and obesity. Environmental factors, which are, would, some would still be related to high estrogen, high fat intake, excess alcohol consumption, and ionizing radiation. Etiology is still unknown and most likely due to a combination of risk factors, either genetic, hormonal, and environmental factors as mentioned. So for histologic classification for breast cancer, it's either ductal or lobular. I'd like you to focus on the 75% of introductal carcinoma, which is the most common. Followed by still ductal carcinoma in situ, and then rarer would be your lobular malignancies, intralobular carcinoma, and lobular carcinoma in situ, which is both at 5%. So, ductal carcinoma in situ, increased incidence because of increased use of mammographic screening and early cancer detection. So, this is 50% of screen detected cancers and may also produce a palpable mass. This is characterized by proliferating malignant cells within ducts that do not reach the basement membrane. So, there are different patterns, comedoc, cribriform, papillary, and solid, as mentioned. And there are different grades, low, intermediate, and high. So, cometo, ductal carcinoma in situ, is typically high grade. These are often multifocal, so malignant population can spread widely through the duct system. So, women with ductal carcinoma in situ are at risk of recurrent ductal carcinoma in situ following treatment and invasive cancer, especially with the same breast. So, your lobular carcinoma in situ is a relatively uncommon lesion. This is a malignant proliferation of small uniform epithelial cells within the lobules. These are also marked markedly increased relative risk for invasive cancer in either breast. So your invasive ductal carcinoma is the most common form of breast cancer, especially in the poor populations. Increasing incidence of your screen-detected cancer in developed countries. Usually, the smaller the mass, much better prognosis. Clinical preparation of your invasive ductal carcinoma would be your hard, irregular, palpable lab. With your pudi arrange, this is due to lymphatic obstruction, which would result in thickening and dimpling of the skin. This is your Paget's disease of the nipple, 
So, this is your ulceration or inflammation due to introductal spread to the nipple. Clinical presentation would be as mentioned, your pudy or drunch or tethering of the skin, nipple retraction, an axillary mass that spreads into the regional lymph nodes, and could metastasize to the lung, brain, and bone. So note the site of metastasis because your invasive lobular carcinoma would metastasize to different areas. It has different histologic types. Most common is your serous carcinoma. So this is your invasive ductal carcinoma of no special type. So this type is characterized grossly by an irregular hard mass with infiltrating clusters of malignant cells in a dense fibrous stroma. Special types would be your medullary carcinoma, tubular carcinoma, mucinous colloid carcinoma, and your papillary carcinoma. Your invasive lobular carcinoma is much less common than your IDC and may present with similar features but would be more likely to be bilateral and multicentric. So classic histology would be small uniform cells arranged as strands, columns within a fibrous stroma, this is an Indian file, or around uninvolved ducts, so this would be the bullseye pattern. They metastasize more frequently to your spinal fluid, serosal surfaces, and pelvic organs. Staging uses the TNM and the Manchester classification, which is basis would be the tumor size and axillary node status. So 10-year survival rate for lymph node negative disease is 8% versus 35% for tumors with positive nodes. So for tumor grade, different grading systems would exist. Of course, increased tumor grade would result in a worse prognosis. And it would depend on your histologic subtypes. If you have your hormone receptors, your estrogen and your progesterone receptors, and certain molecular markers such as CMYC and P53. Treatment options are mastectomy, you could conserve the breast or with or without axillary dissection. For local control, you do radiation therapy. And for systemic control, we have your chemotherapy and your hormonal treatments. So a special tumor of the breast would be your philodus tumor. This is a stromal tumor arising from the intralobular stroma. It could be few centimeters to a massive lesions and has a leaf-like configuration. Most are low-grade lesions that recur locally but do not metastasize. Others are of high grade and exhibit aggressive clinical behavior and spread to distant sites, which would be a cystosarcoma philodes. Of course, the male breast would present with abnormalities also. One is gynecomastia, enlargement of the male breast due to hormonal imbalance, and this is increase in estrogens. So sometimes it could be physiologic, say at puberty or old age, or pathologic, associated with cirrhosis, testicular tumors, and drugs. It can be unilateral or bilateral and present as a diffuse enlargement or defined mass. So, it's most important clinically as a marker of hyperestrenism. So, neoplasia would always need to be excluded in cases of gynecomastia. Although very rare occurrence, female cancer to male cancer ratio is 100 is to 1. Pathology and behavior is similar to cancer seen in women, although with less breast tissue. That's why skin involvement is more frequent. So, following our lecture objectives, can you discuss 
the etiology, pathologic features of different forms of benign, non-neoplastic, and neoplastic breast diseases, list the benign breast diseases that increase a patient's risk of developing breast cancer, and classify these conditions by the degree of risk. Outline other risk factors predisposing to breast cancer and incidence prevalence of breast cancer. Classify breast cancer into histologic subtypes and describe the pathologic features of each. List the prognostic factors for breast cancer. Thank you for listening to our Diseases of the Breast Lecture. Please subscribe to my channel for more lectures on obstetrics and gynecology. Thank you.